Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D. So my favorite Android phones on the market right now include the Nexus 6P and the Samsung S7, both fantastic phones. I find the 6P a little large for my hands and the S7, well, it's a great phone, but touch whiz and the speaker kind of hold it back for me personally. So when the HTC 10 came out, I was super excited to try it because it's another flagship. And as I used it, I started to really like it, but all these lukewarm reviews were popping up on the internet. And I thought I'm having a very different experience of this HTC 10 than seemingly everyone else. So I thought I'd make a little video sharing my experience with it. All right, so design is obviously a very subjective thing, but I really like how the HTC 10 looks. The rendered images, they seem to really exaggerate that chamfer, but in person, it's still pronounced, but it's something that I think looks nice. I also like the white front cover. It sounds silly, but a lot of companies don't spend the time or the money to produce different colored fronts. And then having a black front on a white phone, uh, I'm not a fan of that, but HTC did it right. When I first got the phone, I remember thinking that the buttons were really stiff, like you need to double or triple the activation pressure to click the buttons. But after using it for a month, not only am I used to it, but I actually really love it. They feel durable, they feel tactile, and it makes the buttons on other phones feel kind of mushy in comparison. The capacitive buttons on the side follow the Android standard. So back button on the left, task manager on the right. And I always preferred this over the reverse buttons on Samsung phones. It's a slightly heavier phone, but it feels premium in your hand. It's nice to hold, and because of all the edges, it's not slippery. Now, I recently put a D-brand skin on mine, and it gives it a very clean and minimal look. I think with the skin, this is one of the nicest phones I've held. I've put a link down below if you want one. The weather sealing isn't as good on the HTC 10 as it is on the S7. This only has a rating of IP53, so it's dust resistant, but it can't go for a swim or anything. There's still rubber seals on the card trays, and I've used it a couple times in heavy rain without any issues. See, water resistance is nice, but the seals that Samsung used on the S7 speakers made those mids sound muted, and if you listen to any kind of music with prominent vocals, or if you listen to podcasts or Twitch streamers, that speaker wasn't great. The HTC 10 speakers still have the boom sound moniker, and they're not the same boom sound as we've seen in the past. They're not even truly stereo speakers, but they still sound really good. There's a tweeter at the top, woofer on the bottom, and when I compare it to the HTC M9 speakers, those still sound better because of the proper stereo positioning, but these are still really nice. I would put them on par with the Nexus 6P speakers. They just sound different. I wouldn't say they sound better or worse. Now for headphone use, it has a DAC that produces a very clean analog signal, and the headphone amp is nice. Not as powerful as the one in the LG V10, but it's still better than most flagship amps. If I had to label something as the weakest link on the HTC 10, it would probably be the screen. It's not a bad screen, far from it, but it's not as good of a screen as the Samsung S7. It's not as bright or vibrant as the S7, but it's Quad HD and it's a very nice screen overall. The fingerprint scanner is fast enough. I'm never waiting on it, but it's not instant like the iPhone 6S or the S7. Inside, it has a Snapdragon 820, four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of expandable storage. There's plenty of power under the hood and thankfully the HTC software doesn't bog it down. Battery life is also good. It's a full day battery for me, but whenever I forgot to charge it at night, it was really unlikely that I'd make it through a second day. I'd say the battery feels similar to the Samsung S7. A very comfortable full day battery. There's no wireless charging, but it does support quick charging. As for pricing, it's around $700, so it's definitely one of the more expensive phones on the market right now. The software on the HTC 10 is surprisingly nice. See, I'm a stock Android guy, and there are very few skins that I enjoy using, but HTC Sense is solid. It's not super lean. There's actually quite a few HTC elements that are kind of folded into this version of Android, but here's the thing. The additions are subtle, but they feel like they should be there, or they deserve to be there. And there's nothing obnoxious or annoying hanging around. And there's also no duplicate apps, so it seems like a minor thing, but it always bugs me to see multiple uninstallable apps that all do the same thing. There's none of that here. One minor gripe about the software, the quick launch for the camera could be better. It uses a double swipe, but you can't do it too fast or too slow. It's kind of like timing a Street Fighter combo. I'd much prefer physical buttons for this and without that timing restriction. So the camera uses the same sensor as the Nexus 6P, but they've made the aperture wider to f1.8 and it has optical image stabilization. So it should be a very capable camera. Unfortunately, the software it shipped with had some issues. The camera felt really slow, and a lot of the earlier photos I took had blown out highlights, and some shots had this weird haze in the photos. 
They've since updated the camera software and it's much better. The sad thing is that a lot of reviews out there were done before this update and they painted a pretty shaded opinion of the camera, but with the new software, photos in daylight are pretty comparable to the Samsung S7. Low light photos are still pretty good, but not as clean. Overall, it's an awesome camera. I wouldn't say it's the best one on the market. It's easily top five, potentially top three. I think the HTC 10 deserves A's across the board, maybe even an A plus on build quality. See, there's nothing I actually dislike about the phone. If you're looking for a phone that's got the best benchmarking scores or the best dynamic range, or it can travel like the deepest depths underwater, this is not that phone. Pick up an S7, but you will have to deal with TouchWiz and a not so great speaker. But if you're looking for a phone that's excellent across the board and just an enjoyable experience all around, I take a close look at this one. Now, obviously this has been my experience. Not everyone is gonna like the same things that I do, but I think you might like it. I think for most people, this is a universally likable phone. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.